After a couple of weeks of celebration of my Microsoft Flow crash course on Udemy, all of a sudden, I got a message from nowhere. Basically, on LinkedIn, one of my students sent me a message in the politest way possible, telling me, Ali, you know what? It's a beginner course, but it doesn't mean you have to skip the security. We need to know how to secure this flow. So I was like, uh, ho hold on a second. How did I miss that? Well, yes, I did. So I should admit it. I apologize for that. And this is the chapter that I owe to all my students on Microsoft Flow Crash Course on Udemy and everybody else who want to learn about Flow security. Let's get into it. To understand Microsoft Flow security, we need to start with what we are going to secure. There are three things that we can secure when it comes to Microsoft Flow. First thing is that the flow definition. Who can make changes in the flow definition? So basically, who can go to the flow designer and make changes? That's the first thing that we want to tackle. Then we want to get into flow execution. As you can remember, there are some flows that user can go there, push a button, and execute the flow. We want to see how we can give someone permission to execute the flow only. Third one, which goes out of the flow scope, is going to be how you can secure the flow triggers. When it comes to securing the flow definition, we are looking into team flows. So most of the time when you were designing flows, you were clicking on my flows. Right next to it, there are some flows called team flows. We want to see how we can work with them. When it comes to securing flow execution, if you are looking into run-only users, again, we will take a look at them, but it only applies to the flows that they have a button to execute. And for the flow triggers, let's wait till we get there. The setup that I have is very simple. I try to set up an environment that gives you almost every possible situation that you may face dealing with Microsoft Flow. The Flow subscription that I have here is actually an extension of Office 365 subscription. You remember with the Office 365 subscription, you can get the flow that can have 4,000 executions per person and runs every five minutes. That's the extension. And the reason that I picked this one, because in most of the corporations, you are dealing either with Office 365 or Dynamics 365 that both have Microsoft Flow. In this case, I have one user called Ali Reza under E3 developer license, which basically means this account has SharePoint access, has an active mailbox, and inherently it has Microsoft Flow free license. On the other side, I have another user called Flow1 that does not have the E3 license. This user only has Microsoft Flow free license. Now let's take these users into a real scenario. The first thing that I want to show you is the team flows. So let's go to Microsoft Flow, create a dummy flow, and work with it. If we go to flow.microsoft.com, I click on My Flows, and it's time to create a new flow. I click on New, from blank, and I click on Skip. This flow can be anything, so I just use a button, for example, so a button, manually trigger a flow. It doesn't really matter. And I just add a dummy control, for example, send email. Send an email, whatever that is, send it to Ali Reza. Test, subject, and for the body, I would say hello, Flow security. I just save it. It's all good. Everybody is happy. So flow is saved. It's a good idea to change the name and give it a proper name. I say secure flow and I save it. This flow is saved. And if I go to my flows, you see that secure flow is created. This flow is my flow. It's not a team flow. Remember, the secure flow is my flow. It's not a team flow. Now, 
imagine I want to share this flow with the other user that was flow one. And this is the login page for user flow one test. And if you click on my flows under that user, you see there is nothing. And under team flows, again, there is nothing. So let me go back to the other user that was myself and I click on secure flow. And for this flow, I want to share it with the other user so that he or she can actually go there and make changes. Let me click on edit for the owners. And now I can add an owner. So I add another owner called flow one test and I click OK. As soon as I'm done with this, if I come back here, you don't see the flow here anymore. So this flow now is a team flow. Not only that, if I go back to the other user and if I click on my flows, this user will not see it. But if I click on team flows, you do not see it again until you refresh it. So now this user can actually click on this flow and can have access to the edit option. So this user can come here make changes to the flow. And basically now this flow has two owners. You can have more, but typically the scenario like this is when you have a flow that part of it requires a username or password to have access to some certain resource. And you are not authorized to get this username and password as a flow designer. You design the flow, you share the flow with an administrator, an administrator will come in, and the only thing that he or she does is, for example, going to a certain account and make changes to a mailbox, username and password, or something that you are not supposed to have access to. In that way, you do your job as developer and a person who is providing the credentials and does his or her own job. So you are using team flows when you want to share the design of the flow with someone else. Let's go to the next one, which is run only. The run only flow is the flow that you give someone else the permission to only run it. These are typically the flows that somebody can push a button to execute. Let's give it a shot. So I come here and this time I start with this user with flow one. As flow one user, if I click on my flows, I can create a new flow. And this flow, as I told you, it has to be a direct call from Microsoft Flow or using a button. I call it test exec only. And I click on create. I click on new step and I need to add an action. Again, send email. I pick this one up. You see it cannot because this user does not have an email account. Let me sign in as a different user. So I actually added a different user and I call it, for example, another user that I pick from here, test and whatever else that I want to add to the body. It doesn't really matter. I never want to run this flow. I just saved it and we're all good. This flow is only available to this user. If I log in as myself, and if I go to this flow, refresh, do whatever you want, you don't see it. And I don't have access to this flow. You don't, I don't see it under team flows. But now this user, I mean flow one, wants to give permission to me to execute this flow only. To do that, he can click on this one and click on run only user. As soon as flow one clicks on edit, my name can be added here. Select, great. You see that this flow is shared with me. Now let me see what I see there. When I come here, if I click on my flows, I don't see anything. Refresh, refresh, there's nothing here. If I go to my team flows, again, there is nothing here. Where is this flow now? That's where people get lost.
but you will find something interesting in the mailbox. If I click on this Microsoft Flow email that I just got, in my mailbox, I have an email telling me that, hey, you have a flow, get the button. I click on this, it takes me to a page somewhere under my flow, and I can click on continue and run this flow. And I can say run flow. Great. So if I have access to that mailbox, I get the button so I can run the flow. Does it mean that any user who doesn't have mailbox cannot run the flow? What if Ali Reza creates a flow and wants to share it with the other user that is flow one? How does that work? Let's take a closer look at that email. If I go back to this email and if I scroll down a little bit, you will see there are a couple of links there. One of them says, download on App Store, get on Google Play, and get on Google Play. So if I click on get on Google Play, it actually takes me to the Microsoft Flow mobile app. If I install it on my computer, I'm good to go. I've already installed this app on my cell phone. Let's take a look and see how it works. Now my tablet, I'm on Microsoft Flow. I click on buttons and you don't see the control. But if you click on get more on the top corner, you will see test exec only. And if I click on this plus, I can actually add it to the list of my buttons. And if I click on back to the add buttons, you will see that test exec only is available here. So now from here, without having access to the email, I can actually click on it, start it, and get the results. And here is the result of that execution from the tablet. All right, that was it. As you can see, there is not much into Microsoft Flow security. It's very easy to implement and very easy to configure, not that much of complexity. Mainly the complexity is securing the resources that interact with Microsoft Flow. Anyway, thank you for watching. That was the missing chapter that I owe to all my students on Udemy and everyone else that wants to watch and learn something. Stay tuned.